but folks. Admitting now. Okay. Good afternoon for those who just joined us. We will begin in just a couple of minutes. Good afternoon, everybody. As people are joining, I'm just going to invite everybody to share their name and their organization or the tribe that they work with in the chat. And we'll get started here in just a minute. We're just going to allow a few more people to enter. Okay, I don't want to wait too long because we have quite a bit to cover. So I'd like to welcome everybody to the workshop for tribal communities and their collaborative partners for the Transformative Climate Communities Grant Program. And I thank you for sharing your Friday afternoon with us. We have several people on the line here and we'll do introductions in just a moment. Find the right buttons here. Before we begin, we have a few housekeeping statements here. First, this session is being recorded and it's going to be recorded for educational purposes only. So if you have the ability, please make sure that you've muted your phone line. 
for a clean recording. And if you have any questions at all, please use the raised hand feature or put your question into the chat. We encourage you to turn your cameras on when you're speaking, um, but it's not a mandatory thing. And this recording and any uh, handouts or resources that we talk about will be available after the session is complete. And we will send out a follow-up email to you that will also contain a survey. Okay. Our agenda today is as follows. We'll go through welcome and introductions for the TA team and SGC. We'll have an overview of the Transformative Climate Communities Program. We'll talk about some of the experiences that we have seen with the grantees through the TA process and through the application process. We'll talk about the, pre the program framework and the application overview and timeline. We'll have an interactive Jamboard session where we're going to really encourage your feedback on all aspects of the process of the application and the guidelines. And then we'll cover next steps if you're interested in pursuing a TCC application. This webinar, we hope, will teach you about the Transformative Climate Communities Program or TCC program. We're going to make sure that you have the opportunity to hear from other tribal applicants about their experience with the TCC application process and make sure that you have an opportunity to provide feedback to the Strategic Growth Council on the TCC grant program. So please note this email here on this slide, tcc at sgc.ca.gov. If you have any questions, comments, or additional feedback, whether it's during this presentation or afterwards, please make sure that you share those comments with the Strategic Growth Council at that email address. So our next step is welcome and introductions. For the TCC program, we have a team of technical assistance providers that's led by Estelano Advisors, Arup, and CivicWell. And then we have additional six TA provider groups that specialize in different disciplines. And we will go just quickly through the list of enterprise, who deals with urban housing, CDRG, who deals with the GHG quantification. And we've got the California Coalition for Rural Housing, who deals with rural housing concerns. National Indian Justice Center, who works with the tribes. California Relief, who has urban greening and forestry advice. And Farallon Strategies, who provides information on climate Now I'd like to turn it over to Brian with SGC to introduce the S. Oh, sorry, one more slide. I hit the button. So I, my name is Raquel Myers, and I'm with the National Indian Justice Center. And as part of your tribal advisory staff, we will be leading this particular webinar along with folks from Civic Well. So. I'm the executive director of the National Indian Justice Center, and also with me is Christy Garcia. Christy, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Christy Garcia, and I'm the program manager for the National Indian Justice Center. I've been with NIJC for over 12 years now, and I'm looking forward to um, working with existing and future applicants on this application and um, for any questions and Really, we, we look forward to learning from you and on your feedback to make this um, TCC program um, to better serve tribal communities. Um, thank you. Thank you for having us. And also today with us is Kayla from CivicWell. Kayla? Hello, Kayla McDonald, Cena with CivicWell. I'm a senior project manager and I've been um, supporting primarily implementation grant applicants, and also as of this most recent round, providing technical assistance to planning grant applicants as well um, since the very beginning of this program. So I'm very excited um, having worked with some of the people I've seen um, join the call and looking forward to meeting you more and helping you. 
Thank you. Okay, and now we'll turn it over to Brian to introduce the Strategic Growth Council. Thank you. And thank you all for attending the workshop today. Uh, my name is Brian Newman Lindsay, joined with TCC colleagues Sarah Newsham and Anna Jane Jones, who will be co presenting and assisting in the breakout rooms. Um, I'm from the San Francisco East Bay area and live in Sacramento and have about 10 years of experience on sustainability and climate community resilience projects. And it's really a pleasure to be here. Um, it's a privilege. Sarah, Anna, Jean, do you want to introduce yourselves briefly? Hi all, my name is Sarah Newsham. I have been working on the TCC program for about the past year um, and I support some of the technical assistance work and it's great to be here with you all today. Hey all, my name is Anna Jane. I ask uh, she, her pronouns and I'm also with the Strategic Growth Council's TCC program. Thank you all for being here. So we work with the Transformative Climate Communities Program, which is a grant program administered by the Strategic Growth Council. SGC is a council made up of state agencies tasked with coordinating activities aimed at supporting the planning and development of sustainable communities with a vision of building healthy, thriving, and resilient communities for all. One of the ways we work, one of the ways we work to accomplish this is through the administration of grant programs, um, one of which is TCC. So in addition to sharing information on the program, we're here today to hear your input and feedback on the program as we describe it, um, particularly as we update the guidelines and advance the next round of funding. Um, so we've had some pretty significant interest in tribes in the most recent round of funding, and we really want to build on the work we've done and the response we've gotten um, to better serve tribal communities in California. So SGC is committed to achieving racial equity its operations and investments, policy initiatives to achieve its vision of racial equity in which all people in California live a healthy, thriving, and resilient communities regardless of race. TCC has built itself um, from community input and is constantly looking for ways to improve and better serve the needs of folks on the ground. So today we really want to hope hear from you if this is the first time you're hearing about TCC or if you've gone through prior rounds of applications and have feedback for us. Thank you. Next slide. Um, so what is the TCC program? Um, TCC was established in 2016 to fund neighborhood level transformative climate resilience plans and projects. Um, there's really four things here that I want to emphasize because they're going to come up again later. Um, the first is neighborhood level, um, coordinated projects with multiple benefits, and maximizing investment in community and community engagement. Um, in the most disadvantaged communities. So disadvantaged is a term that's being used in the statute and is used by Cal EPA to describe communities that have um, uh, been disinvested in in the past um, and have high pollution burdens and socioeconomic um, burdens. It's not really meant to be a judgment on the quality or the strengths of those communities, but it's the word we have. So there we go. Next slide, please. So to fulfill the program, we provide two types of grants, planning grants and implementation grants. Planning grants are smaller um, and they fund planning, engagement, and capacity building activities to support community needs. Um, they can serve as a potential to build up in the pursuit of a TCC implementation grant or other implementation funding. Um, but really fundamentally what we wanna emphasize is that planning grants are tailored to whatever the needs of the communities are, as long as they're aligned with those overall TCC goals of neighborhood and community level work, multiple projects, um, and multiple benefits. So yesterday, I'm glad to say that the Strategic Growth Council voted to approve our round four funding awards, which includes seven total planning grants, each of which is up to $300,000. And four of those seven grants are led by tribal communities. On the implementation side, the grants are larger in scale and have more specific requirements, particularly around transform transformational projects and programming. Um, round four includes three awards of up to 35 million each, and each grant has multiple projects, programs, um, and partnerships. So with that high level of overview of the program, Sarah's gonna walk us through the ways in which TCC has changed in recent years to better serve tribes, and then we'll go into a little bit more detail. Thanks, Brian. So in advance of round four, TCC made a number of changes to better serve tribal communities and unincorporated communities. So I'm just going to go through a few of those highlights here. 
So previously only federally recognized tribes were automatically eligible as lead applicants and starting in round four, that eligibility was expanded to all tribes on the list maintained by the California Native American Heritage Commission, which also includes non-federally recognized tribes. And tribes or tribal organizations that are not on that list can also still be eligible as lead applicants or co-applicants through a number of other eligibility options. TCC is a place-based program that is focused in a defined geographic area, and that designation has historically relied on CalEPA's Cal Enviro screen tool. And starting in round four, all areas within federally recognized tribal boundaries were added as automatically eligible project areas. Project area eligibility was also significantly expanded for unincorporated areas, which also creates additional opportunities for tribes. Because a lack of environmental infrastructure can be a barrier in many communities, starting in round four, applicants can use up to 10% of their total TCC implementation funds for water and wastewater infrastructure in their communities. And in round four, SGC also confirmed that tribes do not need to sign a limited waiver of sovereign immunity to receive funds on a reimbursement basis through SGC grants. And a small note on this is that we recently received authorization to begin offering advanced pay through TCC, um, which we're very excited about and we're working out the details about whether tribes can also access that advanced pay option without signing a waiver. Um, but either way, no waiver is required to receive funds on a reimbursement basis, which is how all of the funds have been administered to date. SGC has always offered application technical assistance for implementation grants, which are the larger grants, but starting in round four, that technical assistance is also available to applicants from tribal communities and unincorporated communities for planning grants, which are the smaller grants. And then across SGC, we are taking steps to better serve tribal communities and build relationships with tribes. And we are really committed to this work as individual programs and collectively as an organization. We're really grateful for the imp input and feedback that we have received so far, which has directly informed the TCC program and the other programs at SGC. We know we have room to improve. And so we're really looking forward to hearing your feedback today and in the future. Um, and to working with tribal communities to ensure that this program is accessible and useful. Next slide, please. So as Brian discussed, we're in the process of updating the program guidelines right now in advance of round five, and we're taking several steps to ensure that we prioritize the considerations of tribal communities in this process. So we're working with NIJC and the rest of the technical assistance team to identify barriers and challenges that tribal applicants faced during the round four application process to make sure that we address them for round five. We also administered a feedback survey to everyone who applied for or expressed interest in round four, which included a number of tribes, and we're incorporating that feedback. And then we've also consolidated feedback from recent tribal engagement efforts from programs at SGC, the Governor's Office of Planning and Research, and the Department of Conservation to ensure that we're incorporating previously shared knowledge and input to inform our guidelines update. And starting in mid-November, we will have a draft of the updated guidelines available for a month of public comment. And we'll be hosting virtual and in-person workshops to solicit feedback on the draft guidelines. Please feel free to reach out to us at any point throughout the year with questions, feedback, input on the program. This also goes for anyone watching this recording later on. We are always eager to connect with potential applicants to hear your feedback and input and talk about how this program might be applicable to your community. So thank you for, for being with us today and for sharing your, your thoughts. And I'll now pass it back to Brian for an overview of the program. Brian, great. Um, okay, so what are we here to do? I'm about to talk through some of the key program elements, which are a little technical and a little specific. And so before we do that, I kind of want to pause and just highlight what this program is for. It's for community-led transformation, which means that we're looking toward your communities to tell us, um, taking the lead on what you need. Um, we have a lot of project types and a lot of flexibility. And so we really want to emphasize that while we talk about these specifics, 
they're all meant to be transformative and flexible. So if you have projects or concepts for what you need in your community um, that you want to propose to us, we're very interested in seeing that. Historically, the program has been centralized in urban areas, and we have certain types of projects and certain types of programs that we're more familiar with. Um, as we expand out into tribal and incorporated communities, um, we expect to see different kinds of projects, and we're really excited to um, work with you on what makes sense for your communities. So next slide, please. Can you, yeah, thank you. So there's several key components to the program that really set it apart from other programs, and we're going to walk through each of them. Um, they, that includes a tribal community vision or community place-based approach with multiple integrated projects driven by collaborative governance, um, and then what we call transformative elements aimed at ensuring benefits to residents, businesses, and the project area. So this is really the same set of criteria that we talked about before, right? Place-based approach, community vision, multiple integrated projects, lasting partnerships, and these transformative elements or community investments and support. So the program is flexible, encourages proposals tailored to the specific needs of the community. Each TCC grant is going to look different, and it's not a one-size-fits-all model. Next slide, please. Um, so this is just the same thing reiterated, but I do want to emphasize that we're looking for tribal-led resilience and transformation. We know that communities have a lot of knowledge and strengths, um, and they're looking to bring those to the fore. Uh, and really just what, what we want to emphasize here is that before everything else, this is just about community vision. If you can articulate who your community is and what it needs, um, we're interested in seeing that proposal. Next slide, please. So um, within the implementation grants, applicants select projects based on their goals and aimed at reducing uh, greenhouse gas emissions, supporting communities and addressing current future climate needs um, and other you know, environmental justice, injustice impacts. Um, so a key to the program is the integration of the different projects in the community um, so that the whole is greater than the part the some of the parts on the left um, our range of different project types we support and then within each of these um, you can you know come up with your own project proposal that's relevant to your community on the right is just a map from one of our existing round three implementation sites with multiple projects which include complete streets energy and water efficiency to homes and businesses and community resources urban greening um, and food access and health strategies so TCC staff and the technical assistance providers are sort of on deck to work with you to look at your community needs and fit those into project types or help you develop out your projects based off of um, the structure of the program. So again, please just share with us your vision. Next slide, please. So some of the project types that we, we have a lot of project types, some of the ones that have come up that people have been particularly interested are community microgrids, transit access and active transportation, um, which is a bunch of different components that uh, can be pursued in different ways. Health and wellness, which includes open space, park access, food access through tribal community gardens or um, programming for traditional ecological practices, kitchens, hubs, you name it. Next slide. And then um, making sure that all communities, including tribal communities and unincorporated communities, have access to basic environmental infrastructure, so water and wastewater services, access to job centers and community resources is a top priority of Strategic Growth Council in the program. Um, transportation is funded through TCC, and up to 10% of TCC implementation funds can go to helping communities provide water and wastewater services. So these are requirements for the implementation grant. Um, we can support some of it. And then on the planning grant side, it's really based off of what you need. So if this is what you're looking for, you're able to build a program around that. Next slide, please. Um, 
So then on community driven vision, you've heard me say that a few times in collaborative structures. Um, in the TCC grant, partners and stakeholders come together to decide how to collectively govern the implementation of the grant and the creation of that community um, vision through a collaborative stakeholder structure. Um, all applications include co-applicants who work together within the community toward a shared vision. Co-applicants can be any other entity that will be involved in the grant, such as educational institutions, community-based organizations, nonprofits, other California Native American tribes. At least one applicant must be a public agency, such as a tribal government, county government, or community service district. Um, applicants can team up. Applicant, the applicant team can include partnerships with entities beyond the tribe, but it's not required. Um, for example, an applicant team could be made up of different departments within a tribal government. Um, ideally, TCC supports the development of long-term partnerships at multiple levels beyond the lifespan of the grant. Um, so what we're looking for here and what we're really trying to support is collective governance and community engagement and vision. So our hope is that for any given proposal that you're able to work with your community, um, whatever that means to you, and make sure that those voices are integrated uh, in a way that's salient to your, your program. Um, I just wanted to chime in here. Um, I'm, my camera is going to be off. Sorry about that. <laughs> but um, I just wanted to bring up as a technical assistance provider that really ultimately especially if you're going after implementation grant funding um having um multiple partnerships um particularly with all jurisdictions um or at least most jurisdictions um I'll get into that nuance probably later through technical assistance but anyways most jurisdictions that your project would touch um really is crucial and it you know, getting in touch with those people even before you go, even after a planning grant um, and starting to have, you know, having some type of regular meetings, identifying projects, um, figuring out what the kinks and issues are. These are really big, impactful grants. And so I think just bringing in a broad base of stakeholders, um, whether that's within the same agency that you represent, county, you know, governments, um, um, local nonprofits, um, and the list goes on. I think this is a, a very crucial piece that, along with others as well, that has made, um, you know, especially implementation, but certainly planning grant applications successful. Thanks. And on the next slide, um, we don't have to dwell on this, but this is sort of our collaborative partner structure. So what we usually work, look for is that the Strategic Growth Council will work with one lead co -op, lead applicant. And then as they develop out particular projects, they'll partner with um, other organizations, departments, community groups um, on areas of work that are important to them. So this could be different tribal departments or nonprofits that you work with. Um, all those types of stakeholders we talked about. And um, the lead applicant is provides the leadership and support for the overall application. And then they work together through a partnership agreement. Next slide, please. And then finally, um, we try to integrate all the projects together in an application through these what we call transformative elements. Um, and these exist to enhance the rest of the program objectives and ensure that proposed strategies and projects really provide benefits for the residents and the members um, in a proposed project area. So the first three of these elements that are on the screen here uh, fund programming through the life of the grant and applicants um, submit proposals to address each of these elements. So um, you ideally incorporate all of these throughout the grant. And then on the next slide, um, there's three more transformative elements that are more foundational and are intended to work through the rest of the grant. So climate adaptation resilience um, gets built into all the projects that you propose. We have data collection and tracking that sort of works um, to support the rest of the grant. And then there's leverage funding, um, which we could get into the weeds on at another time, I think. So implementation grants um, have to address all of the transformative elements. 
planning applicants um, need to select at least one and incorporate that into their proposal, either through the planning or as sort of foundational to it. And then again, planning grants exist to really help build the community needs along the same um, program areas as the rest of the program. So all of these can be objectives of a planning grant as well as sort of components of the project. I think with that, we're gonna pass it back to um, NIJC and then we'll um, listen and we'll be available at the end of the presentation to talk more. Thank you, Brian. We want to congratulate the new awardees, and that was Chicken Ranch Rancheria, the Native American Protect Native American Environmental Protection Coalition that will be working with Hoopa, the Karuk, and the Weot. And we're hoping, I know a few of you have made it to the call, that you might have a chance to share with us a little bit about what you did to bring your proposal together. Do I have any volunteers? If not, we can talk a little bit about what we remember from the TA process. If you are from one of the awardee organizations or tribes, please go ahead and unmute. Yeah, I'm from the WEA tribe. I can talk a little bit about our process if you want to. That's uh, good. We, we had a, a, a long time that we got help from the TA process, uh, team, which was really good uh, because it took, took us a long time to figure out what we could do. <laughs> and my question in the chat earlier was uh, part of that, that, that because we live, um, I mean, both the Karuk and Hoopa knows where, where our territory is, at least, because it's neighboring there. So, so it's... Uh, <clears throat> But we live in like the most urbanized part of, of Humboldt County. That's our ancestral territory. And but our, our reservation is tiny. It's like 80 acres on, on a bluff. And and so we, we were looking at working outside the, the, the reservation and, and trying to figure out where we can do both the kind of developments we want to do. We 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 are a land trust or part of the We Out tribe that I, I'm the director of the the land trust. So we try to develop housing, affordable housing outside of uh, the, the reservation, both for tribal members and uh, other community members outside of our tribe. Uh, and, and so what we, we try to put in, uh, put find where can we build where it's in the unincorporated area, but still like densifying infill uh, building areas. And that was really tricky for us. And we only ended up having like, because this, because the, the more, uh, the better places to do to work on was within the cities. That's the that's where most of the resources are. That's how we can do more uh, transportation and so on. So that's uh, the, the better infill areas. But those weren't like eligible because they weren't distressed enough as cities. And, uh, so the more distressed areas would be outside. You know, we had to like do a lot of juggling around trying to figure out uh, where we could build. And we ended up in the unincorporated. Uh, uh, part of Northern uh, Humble Bay, which would be McKinleyville, which is an unincorporated city basically, but it's not, it's under the county. So that's that's how we kind of be, was able to get around that. Um, but, but it was like, yes, that took a lot of our time because we knew what we wanted to do already. We want to develop mid-rise housing mainly because that's what we're looking at to do to, to hit the, all of these three goals that are in here with both for, uh, affordable housing and uh, climate, uh, uh, the greenhouse gas emission reductions for travel, uh, miles traveled lowered and all those things. So we were putting, um, so that, that, that was like, that took the majority of our TA. Then it was just once we knew what we were doing, it was sitting down and writing the, the application and had a few questions, but that, that, was, that was our experience, right? So that, that, that the TA really, we, we wrestled with the team and with the <laughs> with the nofa and trying to get get there and uh but once we uh, once we were there they they were very helpful to the ta of course but uh well, once we were there but then it was mostly okay this is now it's more filling in the uh, the, the this project that we'd finally landed on kind of 
I don't know if that was helpful, but that's <laughs> kind of our experience. <laughs> Thank you, Morgan. It was very helpful. I think what we're hoping to make sure that we do with this presentation is to increase the awareness of how this program works. There is a heavy lift to bring the projects together, but there is also a lot of support. And now that there are some tribal grantees, that network is definitely starting to build. So we just want to make sure that you had a chance to not only talk about your experience, but then as we go a little further into the webinar, there'll be a chance where we can tackle some of those, you know, the larger um, obstacles that you had to actually overcome to get that proposal done. Thank you very much for sharing. Appreciate it. Okay, with that, I think we'll get to the next slide. So for those of you who are just learning about the TCC program, this is a map of the current planning grants from round one through round four, and round four, the more purplish colored bubbles here. And that's where you're going to see the, the four new tribal grantees, or at least where community, tribal communities will be working. This one is the implementation grants, and these are the larger grants, and there were three that were awarded in this latest round. At this point, since tribes were just recently added as eligible applicants, we haven't had any tribal implementation grant applications. So hopefully one of our new awardees under the planning grant will be headed in that direction. Okay. Can I, can I chime in just for one second there and note that um, because of the complexity of the grant, we often see planning grants, um, previous planning grant awardees prepare implementation grants that fit well with the program, which sort of makes sense, but it's not a requirement. You don't have to do a planning grant first. If you have these other elements and you can put together an application, you definitely can just apply to implementation. Thank you. Okay, now we had talked about the idea of this interactive exercise. We're going to use the Jamboard, but if you don't have access to Jamboard or you're using a small screen, please feel free to enter your comments in the chat or open up the mic and we'll have them on the recording. What we're hoping that you'll do in the Jamboard, and I'm gonna have Christy share that screen here in just a second, will be to share your experiences with respect to the application process. What were the successes or the strengths that you faced? What were the challenges or concerns that you faced? And do you have any suggestions on changes? And particularly it's this grant application and the guidelines. We have um, also some very specific concerns that we will try and also get to in another interaction which has to do with some questions that have already come up about issues such as confidentiality of the documents and the data that's provided in the proposals. Um, but we'll hopefully have time to do that. So Christy, can you share the Jamboard? And you'll have okay. a... Go ahead, Christy. Do you see it now? I so do. for everyone, we have a reflection and sharing and Kelly just went over the where you will be. I'll use the laser to kind of go over. So we have successes and strengths and we have challenges, concerns and suggestions. And so we would like for you to maybe, you know, use a sticky note like this and then type in your concern or success um, suggestion and then you can either color coordinate it however you like. And then you can save it. So I'll just type in test and then I'll save it and it will just come on the screen like this and it, it won't show your name or anything. So it's anonymous. Um, so you can put any of your feedback here or like Kelly said, you can unmute yourself or use the chat box and I can, you know, put in the information from the chat box into the 
a sticky note. Um, you can say a success, um, strength, or, you know, if you're still learning about the program, you know, any concerns, um, suggestions, if you've read the guidelines before. Um, so feel free, don't be afraid. You can even use also, um, mostly is just use a sticky note. I think that would be helpful, or you can use a text too, if you like. Um, so we'll take about 15 minutes to do this, um, and I'll just um, wait for your feedback. And then if you have anything on the chat box, I can add it to it.
I'm not sure if you can still hear me having technical difficulties, but um, if you, if there is a post-it or sticky note that you agreed with or would like to amplify it, you can also use a pen um, to kind of add like a plus um, next to the sticky note. So if there's any reactions, you can add a plus or a minus, you can however you wish. Um, I think if more, if you agreed with and want to amplify the com comments that are being made. I might respond to one of the questions that I, I see here while folks are still adding um, the, the question that is, I'll read aloud, but has a part one and part two. Our tribe is not federally recognized and we don't have a land base, so we are looking at a planning grant for a tribal conservation crew to steward lands within our homeland. So is planning for a conservation crew along with partners a competitive type of project or are you looking for projects that would be on a tribal land base? And I think the the answer to that would be that the the goal is to define a geographic area of focus that is relevant to your tribe and then to get all of the partners who would be necessary to implement a project in that area together and on board. So if you don't have a land base, that's totally fine. It would just be a matter of identifying who are the partners that you need to work with to make this conservation crew and the conservation um, investments that would probably accompany that happen. And then, but alternatively, it's not if you do have a you know federally recognized tribal territory where you just are able to implement those types of projects without a non-tribal partner, that's fine as well. Um, it can be you have every option to develop those partnerships, and that's one um, often a very positive outcome of TCC grants is developing partnerships between entities who maybe haven't worked together before or don't have a strong existing relationship but are coming together around this shared project and goal and then that often tends to lead to other opportunities so it's definitely very much okay to define the area that is relevant to you the projects that are relevant to you as long as of course we can make them fit within sort of the overall structure of the program and then just um yeah, identifying the partners who are necessary to make that happen. So, for example, if you want to do a large infrastructure project or something, you would just need to make sure that you had kind of the buy in of the relevant entities who would need to sign off on that. But um, definitely any sort of combination of land types uh, is is fine from the program's perspective. Um, adding to that, I did want to bring up an example. Um, I won't name anyone, but of um, an applicant last round who um, who uh, wasn't a tribe, but it was um, a larger regional government who um, who submitted an application but didn't include um, some jurisdictions. Um, particularly uh, federally recognized tribes within that um, boundary in their uh, as their collaborative stakeholder structure as a partner so you know in that instance that's one where you know you want to make sure that that you are including especially you know sovereign independent jurisdictions as a part of your proposal um, you know whether that's planning or implementation um it, it's definitely more than a good idea to do that 
I think there was one thing and and maybe if SGC you wanted to speak to this um that came up where some a lot of people were wondering well do I need to coordinate with say for example um Department of Fish and Game or Wildlife I'm sorry I don't know their, their current name but some you know a lot of federally federal jurisdictions um that are overlapping with say county lines and things like that um I my take on it was if it's you know abs it's a very crucial critical essential part of your project where you know that there is already planning that's happening there then yes you know you could include them as part of um the partnership um and include them as part of your application and at least coordinate with them somehow but um I felt like in a lot of instances that could be um something that would come out during the plan when you received a planning grant um that could be something where you you would partner with them or, or reach out to them at that point in time another piece of what's eligible under planning grant activities is um is seeking out what those partners what those larger partnerships are um, and really getting ready for implementation construction funds whether that's through the implementation grant program or frankly through another um grant program speaking okay, of just a couple of minutes left on this particular exercise sorry I interrupted somebody there no worries I mean yeah there's there's so much here to respond to I was just um Maybe looking at some of the challenges. Um, so one of them, complexity of eligibility. Um, again, technical assistance is free and available to um, disadvantaged unincorporated areas and tribes. Um, um, and for for again for planning grants and for implementation grant funding, especially where it gets really complex. Um, technical assistance is required for all all of those who apply for for implementation grant funding so can help you navigate that also the I see there are two pluses up on uh, one of the challenges the 50 percent match requirement could it exclude small organizations and um, something that did come up from last round was you know could tribes in particular apply and not ask for the full um funds that are available for implementation so say if the the grant amount per award was 35 million available some communities were asking could we ask for less and therefore one of those that would also help having a, a smaller you know it'd still be 50 percent of that but it would be a smaller amount of funds for leverage um I, I would certainly be interested in, in talking, exploring more about um, helping or the situation where match, leverage matches is, is difficult to come by for some communities. And there's certainly a lot of leverage funding types that are available that are eligible um, to meet that 50% requirement. And that's something you could explore more through technical assistance. Great, thank you, Kayla. Now the jam boards will stay open so you can continue to add more comments and suggestions as we go through. And again, we can also have you email those to the TCC at sgc.ca.gov email address as well. Okay. I had a question uh, uh, for what Kayla just spoke about with uh the 50% match. I know that we have been able to uh, waiver matches before but with an AB1010 waiver. Is that possible in this program too? Brian, do you want to take it or do you want me to take it? Sure. So as written, so like round four, no. Um, right now we have a, the 50% the match requirement is a match on implementation grants we are 
a lot more flexible than a lot of programs in what co counts as match. So that includes in-kind match, that includes um, any kind of staff time or community resources. Frankly, you know, if it's your tribal council meeting and you're talking about our stuff, that people's time, that could be match. Um, so definitely talk to the TA providers about what counts as leverage for the grant. And then when you're doing a planning grant, you can also use those resources to apply to other grants um, and potentially find other leverage, right? So there's some flexibility, but we are considering, we are trying to figure out how big of a barrier it really is to have this leverage match. Um, so if you're foreseeing it as an issue, which is what we're seeing, we definitely want to hear um, alternative proposals about better ways we could we could structure the program for round five. That would be a good suggestion post it. Okay, I'm gonna go back to our presentation. Thank, thank you, everybody, for participating in those exercises. It's very helpful. Our next segment is to look at the application overview and timeline. And for those of you who are familiar with TCC, some of this is going to be repetitive. But for those who are new to TCC, we just want to make sure that you're aware of some of the primary rules. Sorry, I got to clear up a screen here. So the eligible applicant types for the TCC program include California Native American tribes. I don't think we're sharing the screen if we were. Oh, sorry, I have too many screens going on here. I can see it. Let's try this again. Okay, should be seeing eligible, eligible applicant types in the slide? Yes. yes, we can see it now. Okay, so for those of you who are new to TCC, the application um, includes eligibility for California Native American tribes, and that is defined as both federally recognized tribes within California and tribes that are not recognized within California. Those tribes that are not recognized have to be listed on the Native American Heritage Commission list. That list is, um, it's used to be published on their website. It's no longer published consistently, so they do update it. So it's important that if you are not sure if you're on the list, that you get in touch with the Heritage Commission to determine if you are. For those tribes that are organized under a nonprofit status or a community based organization, you can also be eligible under those two definitions as well. You can see there's several other definitions, but we want to make sure that you understand where tribes fit in and which which particular eligibility components they fall under. The planning application is comprised of four pieces, particularly the narrative. It has descriptions or requires descriptions of the project and the planning area and community needs and how those activities will address those community needs. It must have the strategies on how you're going to address them and it must contain transformative elements. And I don't know that we can highlight that or underline that enough. Most of the grants that tribes compete for are oftentimes very narrow and very singular. The TCC program is expecting to have a broad 
array of different projects within a particular proposal. You must include a work plan and a budget, and there should be readiness documentation or letters of support that makes sure that your project is ready to go at the end of your planning period. Now, SGC provides files for you. There will be some forms for your budgets and your work plans that are provided that you will use and they're very helpful tools. Okay, sorry, the screen is not moving, bear with me. There we go. And Kayla, would you like to go over the components of the implementation? application? I'm um, sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so with implementation grants, um, there are definitely a, f um, a number of things, <laughs> but a few things here outlined that are required. Um, so depending on the strategy and the project type, um, there are different types of, um, of thresholds. Um, there are definitely also um, thresholds required um, just for the project or the, the project as a whole, um, say from various um, project partners, the lead applicant and the co-applicants. And there are also narratives. So there are narratives um, that are required, again, um, that talk about the project and all the pieces as a whole. And there are also um, narratives for each um, project type, um, which are um, pieces of the strategies. So sorry if that's a little bit confusing. But anyways, <laughs> there are a number of narrative documents um, that have to be filled out. And then for each of the transformative elements that were mentioned earlier, there are also um, narrative questions. And, and all of these things they do um, help you also as an applicant weave together the intent of your project all the the, um, the project partners all the various projects um, and it's definitely helpful to to integrate everything and think of it as a whole there are also uh, work plans associated with the transformative elements and the projects budgets as well um, and readiness, readiness documentation that's required for um, some of the project components um, and as well as um, the project as a whole. Thank you. Okay, so we have enough time. We can get you to engage that Jamboard one more time. This time, there are a few items that came up with respect to TCC guidelines, and we're hoping you might have some very specific feedback about these particular areas. And we know we're asking you to kind of engage this Jamboard one more time. So if it slows down, we'll speed up through it, but hopefully it'll take about 15 minutes. So Christy, I'm going to have you share that Jamboard again, and our focus will be on the round four planning application guidelines, the data confidentiality question, whether or not the reporting requirements were too extensive, the partnership structure, and the partnership commitments. So basically, what are your thoughts about these requests? to actually submit those applications. And now that you know how the Jamboard works, please feel free to just to grab the post-its and start to add. And maybe I can provide a little more context on, on what we're, we're thinking about some of these items. Um, so our, yeah, this first sort of bucket of, uh, questions is just around, are there costs, project types that you would want to have funded through TCC that are sort of aligned with the overall goals of the program as we've described them today that 
would be relevant to your community and either you don't think are funded through TCC or you're not sure if they're funded through TCC or just that would be a priority for you. That's really helpful feedback for us to make sure that um, our guidelines are aligned with the actual needs in your community. So if you have any thoughts on that topic, maybe use that first column there. Um, the second question on data confidentiality. So this isn't really as much of an issue in the planning grants, I believe, but for implementation grants, we do have sort of a comprehensive program evaluation. You will work with a third party um, evaluation partner of your choice to help do a comprehensive evaluation of the program. And then there's also some sort of mandatory reporting that we have to report up. And so there's just a lot of sort of information that is shared after the grant is awarded. Um, and we have heard from through other programs and uh, that, you know, there's just general concerns about making sure that tribes and tribal communities have ownership of their data and information and um, have control over how it's shared. And so we are just sort of gathering input on what type of language or assurances would you like to see in our next guidelines update so that you would feel comfortable that your that that you would feel comfortable participating in the program and knowing that you would have control over your your data and you know understanding that we'll have to strike some sort of balance between having that we have to report some things but we we really want to make sure that we are flexible on this and are putting in you know the requirements and structures that would be appropriate. So any thoughts in that general area, we'd love to hear your feedback again, either today or at any time in the future, um, including after we release the draft guidelines. I think that next bucket is basically the same thing as just what um, any thoughts around that or general reporting requirements. And then, yeah, the partnership structure and commitments is just sort of broadly how could a program like TCC facilitate partnerships um, either within your child community with external partners like land management agencies or other government types? Um, and yeah, how would that, what, what opportunities might this present and how could we facilitate that? And then kind of part two of that question is if you are partnering with a non-tribal entity to accomplish a project, whether that's an infrastructure project or something that's um, taking place on land that you don't directly control, what type of um, requirements or practices would do you think would be helpful to make that process go smoothly? So as an example, in this past round, we required that if you were including a project area that included say like a county and a tribal land, you had to develop an MOU, a memorandum of understanding with that county to make sure that they were bought into the project and were going to support it and be helpful when you came, it came time to implement the, the things you were planning for. Um, we heard that maybe that was a barrier in the application process, just getting everyone on board and the time frame provided. So maybe one idea would be to just have um, require that the county submit a letter of support or something like that. But we want to just find something that will ensure that the partners that you need cooperation from and partnership from are on board, but we don't want to impose extra requirements. So any thoughts you have around past experiences you've had or just structures that could facilitate that, um, that's kind of those last two buckets, what we would love to hear. So. Again, we these are just some places to start thinking. You can also feel free to add just any other feedback that you didn't get to add earlier. Um, but the, if you're looking for some specific ideas that we are thinking really actively about for this next round of guidelines updates, these are some of the ones that are on our mind right now.
You know, I had a question out there for the audience, um, especially when it comes to partnership commitments. I was just wondering if there are any um, types of, you know, documentation or ways to show that partners um, are on board to implement a project if awarded without requiring um, board approval or council, tribal council approval, particularly for planning grants, because we know that was a, a barrier that applicants this past round faced. Yeah, that's a good point, Kayla. And we, just to add some context, so we originally had the requirement that all applicants tribal, non-tribal, everyone has to submit a evidence of a past formal resolution from their relevant board or council authorizing the application by the time of the application. Um, definitely got feedback that that was a much greater barrier for tribes than for, like, say, a city government that, you know, meets every month. And so we were able to, during the application period, reduce that requirement to um, a letter uh, of support from uh, a member of the tribal council with the understanding that when the actual application was awarded, then the resolution would be required. Um, so yeah, that's that's our current sort of plan for the next round is that seems to work for most folks is to just require a letter from a member of the tribal council in place of that requirement. But definitely if you have feedback on on that requirement, please let us know. And I believe we still required like draft MOUs, right? With signatures, if I recall correctly. And I think in some cases that might've also kind of triggered a, well, does the, the council have to sign off on that as well, even if it's draft, so. Yeah, think... that's a great point. So that MOU that we talked about earlier, if you cross jurisdictional boundaries, like if you have tribal land and a county land, we did require a draft of that document that everyone signed, but it, it wasn't like formally executed, but that definitely also caused some confusion and maybe just was a barrier on its own. So um, yeah, appreciate any feedback on that topic as well. I mean, that was something we, we had to do. We couldn't have the MOU drawn up, we had to have a draft. But I, I mean, it's, I would, we had letters of support from, from, from like the county planning department and things like that uh, to supplement the MOU. I don't know if it's a barrier more than that. It's like another piece of paper you have to do already. Like, even if it's not executed, but I'm also understanding that you need those things. It's hard for us. It wasn't a huge barrier for us. We managed to get it in, of course, but I don't know what, what it is for others. Uh, so I don't want to talk for others. I just want to call out the post-it about the tribal perspective on transformative differing from the non-tribal perspective on transformative elements. And just want to uh, emphasize that this really is a community-driven program so that if you can explain how it will transform your, your community, you definitely should be including it as an element of your proposal. Yeah, I don't know if whoever whoever made that note is interested in speaking up and, and sharing a little bit about what they were thinking, but I do think we have uh, a lot of flexibility in um, the way we approach it, though I see that this is also talking about like the partnering, so that, that may be the more particular point.
on the data confidentiality column, we have that one has no particular post that's related to it, at least on my screen at the moment. Oh no, there is one internal budgets. Um, I think that is something that's almost a standard requirement for most tribes is that their important documents are kept confidential. That could be a good representation of that perspective issue that they wouldn't necessarily feel like it had to be restated. Is anybody still working on post-its? It's slowed down quite a bit. I know the weekend is starting to weigh heavily. Okay, what do you think, Sarah? Should we move back to the slides? Sure, and folks can keep adding um, as more thoughts come. We'll, we'll definitely be looking at and recording all of this. Okay, I'll go back to sharing my screen. The jam boards will stay open and you can also add comments to the chat. Okay, so it is interesting tie in to how the TCC program can benefit tribes. It really is aligning quite well with some of the post its that we've seen. So, in the first bullet, it says tribal communities have their own strategies and actions to address climate change. I think there is recognition that the tribes will have their own strategies, their own particular projects, their own focus. The whole goal will be to make sure that you can incorporate the statement of how those elements fit into the community view and to be able to explain how transformative it would be for the community to be funded. The funding from the program can be a resource to uplift and or continue to uplift the work of tribal communities and what work they're already doing. And benefits include applications for future TCC grants or other resilience projects through later TCC grants or other funding. We saw a number of applications that would really result in some broad pro partnerships and planning for projects that could be long term. Um, that TCC funding through a planning grant would really support not only a future implementation grant, but also other types of funding programs. Can continue to build long term relationships and partners with either your surrounding jurisdictions or any of the agencies that you have to work with. Now it's important for us to emphasize also that this is inclusive of tribal departments, so you can have partnerships within your tribal community among those different departments as well. And that the benefits support the use of tribal cultural practices and traditional ecological knowledge. So when we were talking about confidentiality, this is another area. This is important for tribes to take into consideration how much of that cultural information that you can really put to work within your community and also be sensitive to how it's used and where it's used. Kayla? Yeah, but yeah, I um just wanted to make one distinction here as well um you know i i definitely think both of the grant types are beneficial to tribes i mean and one the planning grants um they're really broad in what's eligible what you're able to do with them you can use them to really um, develop your partnerships so seek out like i mentioned previously who 
who all you need to bring to the table um, to implement projects, to implement an implementation grant in the future, or a, go after other funding sources to just build up those relationships. So I think that's also really good for, um, you know, smaller, smaller tribes or for, um, you know, nonprofits when there is no actual um, federally recognized or other California recognized tribe on the national heritage list. Um, I think it, yeah, it could help you also build organizational and financial capacity, um, which is a requirement if you are a lead um, applicant on a project type, if you go after implementation grant, it can do, um, you know, fund outreach and engagements, a number of things could be funded through that. Um, and then of course, implementation, um, you can ask for a quite a bit of money to do a number of things. And with implementation grants, there are a couple of comments have come up about, um, you know, transformative is different, um, you know, depending on the tribe, depending on the applicant, but that the implementation grant funds require three, three strategies or three projects. So, you know, if you've seen some of the implementation grant awards that have been um, given out, sometimes they they're they're looking at, you know, six, seven, eight, 11 different projects. So the minimum is is three strategies. Um, but that's also in addition to the transformative elements. So um, you know, if you have an impactful application, um, a clear vision, even with fewer projects potentially, you you know, it could work for a smaller um, vision, smaller project area as well. Thank you, Kayla. So what do you do next? If you're interested in applying to TCC, we really suggest that you take advantage of the resources that are available to you. Some of the primary obstacles or burdens or some of the heavy lifts are defining that project area and developing a vision statement around your project. Thinking about the partners and engaging them as early as you possibly can, and then identifying any project strategies. So we have links here on this particular slide for the mapping tool and the program guidelines. And you'll be looking for round five guidelines, which have not yet been published, but you'll be notified when they are. And when you're thinking about your partnerships, make sure that you're looking at timelines for various meetings, particularly those folks who may be working with tribes um, the tribes may have a meeting schedule for council meetings and they may need council approval before they can engage in the proposal. So making sure you know what those timelines are will be imperative. We also will be providing pre-application technical assistance such as this particular workshop. And we'll ask when you um, visit the website, and it'll be in the follow up materials that you do an intake survey. The intake survey basically gives us an idea as to whether or not you're going to apply for a planning grant or an implementation grant. And then the TA team will be notified that you may be in need of TA. And we'll reach out to you. The other types of pre-application technical assistance include resources and tools that will be published and one-on-one -on -one capacity building. So the workshops that we have had for the tribal communities and for the rural and unincorporated communities will be followed up with another TCC specific application workshop that will be happening, I believe in November, we'll provide you with the right dates and then there'll be one early next year. Okay, this is our last interactive exercise. We'll see, you're holding up very well out there. Um, we're gonna have you break into two rooms. The first room will be for those who are new to TCC and the second room will be for those who've had some experience with the TCC application process. You'll see the option to join a breakout room. You can choose one or two. 
you'll have staffing from the TA team and from SGC in each one of the rooms. And our over our overarching goal is to be able to have a chance to discuss any particular questions that you may have. So no longer having you answer our questions, but we'll have a chance to answer yours. Okay. Do yeah. we, sorry to interrupt, but do we want to answer Dean's question quickly first? Sure. Sorry about that, Dean. I have not checked the chat here. Kayla, you want to read the question out while I try to Get yeah, nice I, think, in I think I was just um, a point of clarification, Dean, if you're looking, it says if you can build upon your pre approved project area. So if that's what you mean, like if it if you're around five project area might be different than round four, I think it'd probably be good to send that to us again, and we can approve it. But if you're just saying if you can use the same project area from round four in round five, I think that would be fine. Um, unless SGC, you know of any potential project area eligibility changes that might occur that might impact the pre-approvals done in round four. No, Dean, I, I think if you're using that local data option, which is what I believe you did, I'm confident that it would still be approved in round five. I think you probably would technically still have to just resubmit whatever you already submitted um, to meet our sort of application requirements, but we can definitely talk more about that and make sure that yeah, you don't need to do any additional work. Okay, now at the round five guidelines, these are the anticipated timeframe that we're looking at. Um, the publication of the guidelines will happen before February 2023. By mid-November of this year, we'll have draft guidelines that will be released for 30-day public comment period. This is really important. We're really trying to encourage a lot of people to start reading during those public comment periods and providing feedback to the agency so that they can make any adjustments as needed. In February 2023, the final guidelines will be updated and published on the Strategic Growth Council website. In March 2023, there will be an application and notice of funding availability that will be posted on the website. And beginning in April and May, we'll have pre-proposal submission deadlines. And then by summer, the final application submission deadline will be there. By fall of 2023, the awards will be recommended and adopted by the Council. And one of our last slides here, the resources and links that will be important for you to have when you're looking up information about the program, SGC's website, the technical assistance link, the general fact sheet about the program, the TA survey link. This is where you'll want to go if you think that you're going to put a proposal in and you want to start your TA process. The guidelines will be posted at the guidelines link here and the application package also has a link. So you'll get these slides in a follow up email from us after this webinar is complete and you'll have access to all of those links. I just want to say thank you, remind you again that the email address of tcc at sgc.ca.gov is where you can submit any additional comments or questions after the webinar is over. And thank you again for your participation. Have a safe and happy weekend. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.